All right, so hello and welcome. Today we're going to be reacting to the history of the United States, I guess. This seems to be a popular video, and I thought I'd add my commentary. I don't know much about, uh, well, I don't know how far back this is going to go, but I know a pretty decent amount from 1776 onward about American history because it was forced down my brain like every other American kid, basically, okay? So, the original video will be in the link in the description, and my Patreon will be down there if you like these videos and want to help me out. Otherwise, let's get straight to it. The United States is a country on Earth with 50 states. It's powerful, and it's American. It's pretty cold, and human beings are trying to spread all over the planet. They reached the edge, and they got sticks and babies. Hey guys, check out this bridge. It goes to the other side of the world. And there's a lot of food. Oh, nice. Well, you're all stuck now. Yes. Very simply, that is what happened. Okay, so people are chilling out on the land, gathering food, and hunting mammoths. Well, they died, but they got a backup. Hey, now that we got food and land, let's form a society. A society. Some would say, a great society. Oh, someone just discovered gambling. But more importantly, someone just discovered farming. Wait, we could've just planted stuff in the ground? Yeah. And soon everybody learned about this, planting corn in the process. Hey, now that we got farming, let's form a better society. Then they make some hills, then they die. But they still make those hills, making a city around one. Meanwhile, the Mayans become so obsessed with the snow. Then, they collapse. Some natives in the west like the desert, building their town under some rocks. Yes, this is one of those uh, very interesting places we have out here. Um, with the, basically the underground um, shelters. And if you actually live down in the south, I do. Um, you understand why they did this because it is very fucking hot outside and right now it's about 110 ish So yeah, I don't know, it gets pretty hot and building under uh, under rocks uh, makes it cooler North America was getting pretty diverse pretty complicated and pretty beautiful sort of the Aztec and the Inca empires are getting started Wait, hold up. Check out this boat Knock knock it's Columbus from Europe. Yo, what's up my Indians? Where my spies is at? Yeah, um, if you don't know, he thought he did actually land in India. That's why it's called the West Indies. And he called them Indians. And he got the spices. But we didn't, they didn't have spices um, in the Caribbean, so... Columbus politely asked, does disease kill the entire population? Yeah, 90% of the Native Americans... And Native American is a general term from basically North America all the way south. 90% died. And, uh... Yeah, you can see how that could be a very big problem. Hey Spain, I found India. India? And so Europe began legally assaulting the Americas. Sorry guys, give it a second. Wait, this isn't even India. But dang, check out these resources. Hey Portugal, I'll take all of this and you take this tiny chunk. Okay, he's talking about the Treaty of Tordolitas. Okay, so. To back up a little bit. So this is when the world was still mainly Catholic. Okay, and by world, I mean Europe. Europe was mainly Catholic at this point. Okay, so the Pope, to stop the colonies from, you know, just beating each other senselessly over colonial wars, he's like, okay, we're going to draw a line on the map, the Treaty of Tortolitas, and we're going to divide it. Everything to the west is Spanish, everything to the east is Portuguese. Now, this worked out very good for Spain and Portugal, until you realize um, they're not the only two countries in Europe, and everyone else wants land. So England is Anglican, or will be. And they don't really care what the Pope says. France colonizes, kind of. They do colonize, but it's more trade-oriented. Um, and then Spain and Portugal, you know, do the rest. And that's why all of basically South America speaks either Portuguese or um, Spanish. Some a little part French. But that's why they majority speak that. And also all the Native Americans are dead from the diseases, so because i'm better than you in the meantime let's use the natives to do the work for us but the natives died remember so plan b check out the new columbus triangle thing now in business i want a bigger okay so l let me back up yes the triangle trade okay i'm pretty sure all of you that were take american classes will know of the triangular trade right uh, processed goods come from the north america or americas over to europe okay um if I remember correctly, or raw resources. Raw resources go to Europe. See, it's been a while since my high school classes and middle school classes, actually. Um, so I think, yeah, processed goods 
or raw resources go to Europe. Europe makes processed goods, machines, guns, whatever, sends them south to Africa. Africans, um, they get the slaves from African slave traders <gasps> and also European traders that would get them, but mo mostly African slave traders. Then they take those slaves and they go to the Caribbean. And then from the Caribbean, they pick up the goods and they transport them back to Europe. And you can see how this is a revolving door now. Now in business. I want a bigger slice of that wealth cake, suckers. The British are off to set up a colony. Second try, by the way. Yeah, so Roanoke was a failed attempt by a colony. Um, and we don't really quote unquote know what happened, but more or less, they all died. That is what we do know. And they did it. Look at that tobacco. Britain kind of sucked religiously. Ew, said the pilgrims sailing away for Jesus. Dude, let's make some colonies. Very oversimplified, but yes. Um, first, I actually went to the Netherlands, and then they're like, oh, we don't like those Dutch people turning our children Dutch. Mm, screw that, let's go. So they go over here. And yes, all these colonies over here in New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. Woo! With more colonies in the middle. I can't eat pork, but bacon just made slavery popular. England's still... Yes. Am I unfamiliar with bacon? Bacon's Rebellion? I very much am. You can leave in the comments, but went over my head. Sucks. Hey guys, check out my new crib. You can do whatever you want. Check out those immigrants. Let's talk about the South. Here, slavery was a big hit. What did Britain do about this? Nothing. Sweet, we're free. Because we gotta stay Christian. Yeah, so it was the Great Awakening. Man, it's been a long time since I've talked about any of this. The Great Awakening was God. The revampalization of Christianity in America, right? So it would be a lot more church people going to churches and reaspiring Christianity in North America. Man, it's been a long time since I've learned any of this. Europe was getting intellectual. The colonists heard about it and started reading stuff like John Locke, Adam Smith, Toad, understanding liberty and democracy. Check this one out. Britain and France are killing each other. Britain wins and they're broke. Damn, we need some cash. Okay, that's very oversimplified, but Seven Years War happens. Um, Britain takes on France, right? The Seven Years War, the col over some colonies down in America. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on with Prussia and stuff, but simplifying. Um, British wins. The British is out of money. They're like, hey, America, you got all this land that we gave you. Can you pay us? And America's like, ha ha, Nassa, dude. No, we're not doing that, bro. Hey, can we go west? No. Also give us money. So Britain starts taxing the hell out of the colonies. Something just happened in Boston, and Revere told everybody, let's dump some tea in the ocean because they taxed it. Hey, Britain, can you stop ignoring us? Britain didn't really care. They just kept doing it. Okay, we got it. That is so much information so quickly. All of that stuff happened. Taxes, yes, Township Act, everything. I talk about this, people. So Britain's clapping us right now, but I think we can still make peace with them. Look, another shooting. And Revere told everybody. That's not happening, said Thomas Paine, writing a book about independence. Now people hated Britain, and he declared independence. You guys suck. Psst, you want to team up against Britain? And they destroy Cornwallis. Wow, okay, yeah, that was real quick. Okay. Um, France, allied United States. Yes, and we basically were able to win because of France. Because our, if we fought alone, that war would have been over so quickly. It would have been actually funny to watch how fast it would have gone. No, but France and Spain and everyone else that helped us, even the Dutch, they give us money, um, helped us be able to eventually win the war. But France was by far the biggest contributor there. Um, and yes, Yorktown was the last one where Cornwallis surrendered. Um, to quote unquote the French general because he didn't like Washington. And they win. Get out of here, Britain. Now we're in control. Oh, we need a government. They create a constitution, but a bunch of farmers made it fail. Yes, so Shay's Rebellion. Oh man, okay. Let's let's back this up. So the Articles of Confederation was basically just a big confederation of the states. Think uh, best way I can describe it is the Swiss Confederation, but worse. Um, we we barely talk to each other, and we basically we're all separate countries, and we're like, hey, we'll defend each other, maybe, if we get attacked, maybe. Um, and obviously that didn't work. And then Shay's Rebellion happened because, you know, weak government, no taxes, no president, and one house. Um, and it, it, it took militias to be assembled to put it down. Okay, we gotta talk about this, people. We need to remaster our government. The states had some ideas. Let's. 
Yeah, so this, let's, let's see if I can back up here. The states have some plans, okay? Now, Virginia, there's actually pretty complicate, complicated on how this works. So Virginia's plan um, was to have two houses, right? And the reason they wanted two houses was for one for population and more representation because they are bigger than they thought they should have. So think like California today in, in New York and stuff. Because they're bigger, they want more power, okay? It favors the big states and it offers them, you know, vetoes or whatever. New Jersey, on the other hand, was a small state with one house, one for small states, okay, for state representation, um, just so that, like, Virginia couldn't, like, dominate everything. So that's why we have two houses, one Senate and one house. The Senate, which is two senators, is for every state from New Jersey, and Virginia, it gets the House of uh, House Representatives, right, for population-wise. Now, Virginia's, I don't know if I'm going to go over this, but the three-fifths compromise, I think, is in here um, to determine, like, how many, how much... Three fifths of a person is a slave to count up the population, <laughs> because the southern states needed more population because a lot of their population was slave at this time. Let's just do both and create the Congress and stuff. Some people like this, but some people didn't like it, so they add ten rules to make sure they like it. We need a leader. So they invent the president, and everyone made it this guy because he was such a legend during the war. Nice bank, Hamilton. Yes, they made it George Washington, and he was like, I don't really want to do this, but okay. And he's, he basically had enough power to do whatever he wanted. And the reason our quote-unquote republic is so stable right now is because of the precedents that he set. Remember, precedents can be overturned, um, but he set those baseline. Um, and we didn't break it until FDR, if I remember correctly. We didn't break the third term um, on an actual president. We tried. Theodore Roosevelt tried to break the third term limit, but... Wait, how strict should the Constitution be? Yes. No. Goodbye, Washington. Wait, he's got something to say. Don't make political parties. Worst mistake of my life. Okay, said so America, creating them anyway. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it also happened when you have two different... Uh, it happens when you do first pass the vote... Uh, first pass the vote system. Um, and not proportional. It was going to happen either way. Well, Washington said not to do it, but... Either our great leader was an idiot... Or he was just trying to stop something that was going to happen anyway. Because there is no way you can not end with two political parties in a first-past-the-post-voting first system. Wow, that's big words. Hey, can we not follow the law? Whoa, France is going cray-cray right now. Probably because we did that. Napoleon? Yeah, probably because we bankrupt them and we're like, Ha, ah, sorry, we're not paying you. He wants to remake an empire with this huge chunk of land he's got. He failed. Might as well sell it. Hey, do you want my land? Okay. Some yes, very simply yes. People saw Jefferson as a hypocrite after this. I did it. I ended. Yes, and the reason they saw him as a hypocrite was because he's like, I don't know if I should have the power to do this, right? Because he was very wishy-washy on presidential um, powers. But he saw that this could double America's size, and he's like, Yeah, okay. Slavery said Eli Whitney, inventing something that just increased it. Yes, the cotton gin. <laughs> wow, we're going fast. The cotton gin was. Um, something that actually increased slavery because it was on its way out. It was going down. It was on its way out. Um, not for any moral reasons, mind you, or political or any of that shenanigans, just because it was unprofitable. And then he made it ridiculously profitable. So let's hit around. What is Britain doing? Dude, they're stealing our semen. Never mind, it's land. Let's go. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah. Um, okay. The War of 1812 was basically... Okay, it is during the Napoleonic era, okay, with France, Britain, and America. And um, the reason America got mad was because they were impressing our sailors. Think they stop our ships and get some of our sailors and put them on their ships, okay? That probably happened, but more or less it was because British sailors were defecting to America and then they were just recapturing them. Um, but uh, obviously, doing that to a sovereign nation is not a very good thing to do. Um, and it led to a 1812 war. The Canadians burnt our, burnt our White House down, and they will never let us forget it. Um, the battle in Louisiana happened with uh, Thomas Jackson, or Thomas Jackson, Jackson, President Jackson, um, and it was actually after the war, and he won. And now we're at the Great Awakening Part Two. More Christianity, boys. Nice new reform movements. Now slavery is becoming controversial. <laughs> Yo, they're using machines now? What the heck? And it made the North more complicated. Everyone's moving to cities. And slavery's still bad, but, you know, it's balanced perfectly. Hey, guys, I want to become a state. Specifically, a slave state. Yes, sir! 
Let's go. <sighs> Screw you, we're adding Maine to the gang. Yep, pr pretty, pretty much. Hey Europe, stay out of our area, you're pathetic. Henry Clay just announced a dank new system. We'll be good if the South didn't hate it. John C. Calhoun's evading taxes again. I want to remove the natives. You can't. Why? Because we said so. Okay. And he removed the natives. Yeah, okay, this is a big deal. So, this might even be political today. Um, so, the Supreme Court said, hey, you can't move the natives. They have rights. You can't just take them off the land we gave them. Andrew Jackson said, nah, and said, uh, I'm going to do it anyway. And the Supreme Court's like, you can't do that. And Supreme and Andrew Jackson was like, the Supreme Court has made a decision. Let's see them enforce it, broadly speaking. And he did it anyway. So yeah, Supreme Court for you. Remove the natives. You can't. Why? Because we said so. Okay. And he removed the natives. Check out the wigs versus the donkeys. Industry is fire right now, but factory working is horrible. Let's just stop working. Let's go west because we're American. They go west, kicking the natives in Mexico in the process. A lot of Irish people just died, so everybody starts immigrating to the country. <laughs> we're going so fast. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to do everything, but the potato famine happened in Ireland, and Ireland hasn't recovered its population since 1846. That's how many people died and left because of it. Ireland had basically one stable crop, potato. When that failed... No food! And Britain didn't help any because, you know, Britain. A lot of Irish people just died, so everybody starts immigrating to the country. This sucks, said the Know Nothing Party, knowing nothing on foreign influence. We got more land, but how do we use it? Okay, that new land from Mexico? No slaves here. You can make a political party out of this. It didn't work, but it did piss off the South. Don't worry, I got this, said Henry Clay again, adding California after our gold thing happened there. It didn't- Yes, if I remember correctly, Henry Clay was the great um, compromiser of the United States and kept kicking the can down the war for Civil War for a long time, which, in my opinion, helped the Union actually win um, the Civil War because if it happened earlier, it might not have been so pretty. It didn't go well. Frick it, let's let the people decide. Never mind. The woman just had a pretty cool meetup advocating better rights. Introducing the elephants. Yeah, the better rights thing is going to happen for a while, let me tell you. As if donkeys weren't enough. Hey, excuse me, I'm in the north and my master died. Can I be free and be like a citizen? No, because you're black. The nation. Yep, that's exactly. Dress Scott versus the United States. That's basically exactly what happened. The nation started falling apart. After all, the last several presidents didn't really even do anything. <laughs> Guys, I'm Lincoln and slavery is disgusting. I'm running for president, by the way. Okay. Like. <laughs> No, um, he ran on a, he was opposed to slavery because he saw it as immoral. He wasn't willing to abolition it, though. He was willing to compromise on it and say it can stay there. But the South didn't see it that way. By the way, he won. Wait, guys, I won't take away your slaves. Just chill for a bit. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, pretty much. The country's fighting itself. Guys, we need to fight like a snake right now. I'm gonna free the slaves. Except that Yes. Okay, let, let, let's break this down. Woo, okay. So, the, the South is gonna secede, okay? There's the Anaconda Plan, um, which is basically... Oh, here. Basically, you're gonna cut off the South to be able to trade with itself. Um, it's supposed to be going up the Louisiana, because it, it didn't go through Texas up the Mississippi River and cut off the South in two, okay? That's what that is doing. Um, then um, Lincoln Emancipation Proclamation was for the slave states. It was not for Maryland and all of these border states, Oklahoma, Missouri, man, my, my geography is failing me, Kentucky, West Virginia. It wasn't for any of these states because these states had slaves, but they were border states and they fought for the Union. It was only for the Confederate side where they said slavery ended ended um by lincoln's executive order which he also couldn't really do but hey it's an enemy side and he can do whatever he wants at that point except it didn't really do anything but it did change the idea now we're destroying slavery yo but we're still fighting pretty good not anymore the north just set the south on fire and they eventually died hey nice we won Li yeah pretty, pretty pretty much pretty much we got grant we got william tecumseh sherman 
We got Abraham Lincoln. We got Jeff Davis. We got <laughs> Lee, and we got Stonewall Jackson. Why well, something? Stonewall Jackson's not that good. Hey, nice, we won. Lincoln's actually chilling now, and he gets assassinated. Great. Now we got to rebuild it. The country could have been on a very different path if he was able to serve out those last three years, but. That's not what happened. Everything. The South kind of still did slavery and pretended the war never happened. The whites wanted to stay the best race, so they start using violence. And now the US was looking beautiful on the outside, but disgusting in the inside. Businesses became bigger, but the working conditions became badder. This sucks, said the Knights of Labor. Yeah, we're only taking skilled workers, bro. Hey farmers, do you hate railroads? And mechanized farming? Introducing the Grangers, now the populists. The South was getting more industrialized, but now more racist. No, no, trust me, it's separate, but equal. I'm gonna buy everybody. Wait, why don't we donate all our money for society? <sighs> wow, okay, uh, I can't cover all this. Okay, so, no, no, trust me, it's separate, but equal, okay? 1886 is basically legal segregation as long as it's separate but equal it is not unequal in the constitution okay now we're going to talk about the gilded age <laughs> i think we already went past it um this is the era of okay the best way for me to describe this is the era that we live in right now with jeff bezos um all of our billionaires we have okay um elon musk is the best way to think you just buy out your competition and you bribe politicians mark zuckerberg okay and people had very different opinions on this. Imagine um, on what you should do. And then uh, he said, and then horizontal integration. Wow, we're gonna get into this. Horizontal integration is like you buy everyone. So let's say you have oil fields. You're gonna buy all the oil fields, okay? Vertical integration is you're going to buy not just the oil fields, but the process to make the oil, the actual hunters and all of that in a line so that you can do it all yourself. Basically monopolies gonna buy everybody wait why don't we donate all our money for society sweetie let's focus on the cities which are garbage right now introducing the progressives let's fix that crap oh shoot we just ran out of land that's some good grub right there but spain controls cuba you sunk our ship bro we didn't even do anything now we got yes that is basically what happened being exploded more than likely from a boiler room exploding, but it was enough. When you got a Warhawk party and they're like, man, we want war, that's enough. And we kicked Spain and we got Cuba and everything. Got that grub, including the Philippines? This is lit, said William McKinley, getting assassinated. And they lose Cuba. The United States become- We didn't lose Cuba. We just honored our quote unquote agreement because we said, we are fighting for the liberation of the Cuban people. We had to honor that. We didn't have to honor that in the Philippines and Puerto Rico though, so you know, they stayed with us. Comes a world power while doing some other stuff too. Sherman's vice president, not William Sherman, this is a different Sherman, under the new president, William Sherman. Taft. While Europe's killing themselves in this war, the US was actually chilling. Yes, it was a dumb idea to do the Zimmerman telegram. I don't know why they did it, but hey. Germany just ruined it. I'm gonna show you what democracy feels like. Wait, we already did the scene. After the war, Germany was the dunce force to pay a lot of money. Check out the League of Nations. And as you can see, America is not a part of the League of Nations. I wonder why. Can you guys join it, please? No. Whoops, a disease just killed everybody. Russia just became the Soviet Union, and it scared the crap out of everybody. It did scare the absolute crap out of everyone. Not just America, everybody in Europe that was not communist was scared about this. There were troops from every single nation fighting in the Russian Civil War. More or less exaggerating a little bit but you get the picture everyone was in there trying to fight to make sure the whites won and what do you know the communist one alcohol just got banned that's kind of sick and woman got the right to vote finally hey blacks tired of the south yeah okay wow the 18th amendment to ban alcohol okay was because we were it, it is kind of impossible to describe how much alcoholism was you would be drunk all the time um, in this timeline for at least for men and you can imagine what alcoholism is today think even more drunk all the time people thought it was a problem decided to ban it problem is when you ban something 
not many people want to follow it if it's not that bad for you. Example, weed. Um, and the 19th Amendment, women finally had the right to vote. Cool. Nothing else. Have a long way to go. To vote, finally. A blacks tired of the South, moved to the North, and shared that epic culture. The 1920s, we're now in cars, watching movies and breaking it down. And this stock thing's gonna do good. Just kidding. Hoover tried doing something but failed. Then FDR comes in with the New Deal and- The New Deal. More or less, spend money out the ass to try and alleviate it. Did it work? No. In my opinion, no. World War II got us out of it. It did, in the short term, alleviate some stresses on the population, which I give him credit for, okay? Hoover didn't do jack shit. Hoover didn't do jack shit, and he got outvoted and thrown out. Because when you don't do something, when everyone is out of money, losing their houses, it's bad. If you try to do something, sure, you're going to wreck the economy, but hey, you're being voted in. You're not, your power isn't secured, right? So. And it actually worked, but it failed. Yo, Germany's going wild, Italy's going wild, and Japan? Guy wow, look, look, there's some anime. <sighs> Guys, we should team up and take over the entire world. Very oversimplified. A lot of the slides. Damn it, I gotta run for a third term. The US did their same brilliant. Yeah, because he was actually gonna get out um, because his term, and he had been serving since 32, so yeah, he was about to get out and he saw the way the world was headed and he's like, I can't leave. I gave him respect for that, saying he can't leave at a time like this um, because they need an experienced leader to you know, be in, be in control of the United States, so he stayed in move and was actually just chilling. Japan wanted more land, but they were scared of the US, so Japan spits on them. They declare war, and the others declare war on the US. Yeah. Whole video on that I've done previously, but yes. Um, and it was the hardest to do so, but yeah, they did. Hey, that's what friends do. The US is making a big fat bomb, like a really big one. We gotta take down Germany, man. They're freaking crazy. So they take down Germany. Then the US starts taking down Japan. Roosevelt died and Harry Truman carries on the presidency. Mr. President, we can't invade the mainland. Our soldiers will die. Bro, let's just use the bomb. So they drop it on Japan. Twice. Okay, so before the second one. Yes, Operation Downfall was going to be a million man invasion. Um, and the cat, I think, no, I think the, I think just the casualties would have been a million. It would have been horrendous predictions that were coming out from the basically the general staffs of every nation that was going to take part it wasn't just the united states it was going to be great britain the united states australia the dutch canadians every new zealanders every single person would have been involved in this and the casualty predictions were astounding and they're like we're gonna bomb them and we're gonna see if this works if it doesn't work then we may go with operation downfall The war ended after that. Goodbye, League of Nations. Hello, United Nations. But we got a problem. These two don't even like each other. They start another war. Now with nuclear bombs. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that, but I still hate you. It's alliance time, baby. Now with other countries. Okay. NATO. You de basically, the United States back um, side, the West. Warsaw Pact. Soviet Union back. Communist states. As you can see, there's quite a few countries missing. Um, but basically, they were defensive packs uh, with each other to say, if we get attacked, we will help you out, right? To back us up. Also, Germany's in shambles. It's like the hotspot. There's some other wars going on and stuff. Back them up! Look, it's communism. And it scared the crap out of everybody. The two superpowers... McCarthyism. ...wanted to be better than the other. In weapons, wars, allies, and now in space. The Soviet Union just put a thing in space. Oh, heck nah! Then the US creates NASA. America is booming, like the population. Everyone's got television, and fast food becomes a revelation. Like, we're talking about the first McDonald's here. Wait, Wait true? Wait, Cuba's communist? This is- That's not allowed. Can't have communism that close to us. This results in the end of the world. Almost. Screw this, said Kennedy. We're going to the moon. And he gets assassinated. Race in Dallas of all places, where I'm from. 
Racism is bad. Civil rights time. Buses. Education. Marches. Oh shoot, Luther King man? He's standing for equality to fight racism. And the US agrees. Dude, I saw him man. Why is everything sexy? Lyndon wants to take Vietnam to the next level, so he sends a lot of troops. The US slapped the Soviets in their face and landed the first dudes on the moon, introducing Richard Nixon. And he's done with Vietnam because it's a disaster. There goes Watergate ruining Nixon's career. Now nobody trusts the government. Iran and we haven't trusted them since. It, it's actually a very big deal. Um, after I cannot tell you how big of a deal this is. Um, after Watergate, we started to not trust our government and be like, oh my god, they're the bad people. Before that, everyone trusted the government. It's such a mind full swap from what we have today. Before Watergate, you trusted your government to do whatever was in the best interest of the United States. After Watergate, you're like, wow, they really don't. Uh, and then, of course, all the Vietnam stuff came afterwards, and you can see how it starts to distrust in government starts and leads up to this day, right? Watergate ruining Nixon's career. Now nobody trusts the government. Iran just had a revolution, kidnapping multiple Americans because Jimmy Carter and their king were best friends. It's Reagan time. Technology is getting better too and the world's more connected. Oh my god bro, it's computers. You can check emails and play games on it. I'ma make things more free to you guys. This makes the Soviet Union collapse. Very oversimplification, but yes, because when you start giving people freedoms, then they're like, wow, this is, this is shit. It doesn't work out very well. EI, EX, why China and North Korea are still communist countries. No freedom. But hey, at least Germany's back together. Companies start becoming bigger and bigger. Thanks, Bill. Some buildings just got bombed. Happy New Year. Then obliterated. Then a war starts over that. So Which... We are still fighting the war on terrorism, but the war in Afghanistan ended. Surprise, everyone's got a cell phone now. There's the earth where I was actually born. It's on fire and the economy crashed again. Surprise, Obama. And now Obamacare. It's like healthcare, but from Obama. Now you can talk to people online on your phone. Now you can order stuff online on your phone. Everything just got shut down and it just got political and canceled on Twitter. Then we buy the universe or maybe go extinct. I don't know. Yeah, pretty good video. Um, special thanks to Bill Woods, because Bill Woods is the ones that started to do these, okay? Um, that was actually a very condensed version of history, and he lightning rounds through um, American history that you could spend you could spend years on each one of those subjects if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very good video. Um, so yeah, leave your guys' comments down below. Leave a like if you like this stuff. Um, otherwise, tell me what to react to next time. Um, otherwise, I shall see you people next time.